Yes, we're sailing downwind, uh, just under four knots. This is the first time actually that we've ever sailed with no sails. We were going to motor, but there's this nice breeze right up the bum, so uh, yeah, we're just going to drift down at four knots. Getting along quite nicely. Can we be? Previously on Life on Jupiter, the water maker needed repair. We broke the propeller shear pin again and packed up the mainsail for some maintenance. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'm Princess and I'm a lounge singer. I'm Jamie and I fly aeroplanes. We decided to take a year off and go sailing. But thanks to COVID, now we spend our life on Jupiter. Welcome aboard and join us on our circumnavigation. made some friends over here through the power of Pinoy media. Is that right? <laughs> so Filipinas make friends with other Filipinas all around the world. So uh, these guys are what's the boat's name? Vela Nautica. Vela Nautica. It's a uh, Amel and we're gonna go over there and he's gonna have a look at my drone our drone that I broke. I drowned it. He might have a battery or a power supply. Just see if we can power this thing up to see if it works. And if it works, then maybe I'll buy another battery and we can fly again. Fingers crossed. I can't cross those fingers. That's weird. <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah. Let's go. It's a bit rough today. Yeah. We need to fix our drone. <laughs> about to drown it again. Um, Dinghy's filling up with water. <laughs> Get it? to come aboard <laughs> introducing Oliver and Nessa on Vela Nautica check out their YouTube channel he's got some great tips on refrigeration and lithium batteries it's only about two volts in it now no, but it's it's not even so bad so yeah they might get a bit fluffy and you rinse everything with fresh water afterwards. This right? I did, I, I didn't bother with that. Why not? Well, because it was already smoking and, and shorting across the, the motherboard when you take this so cap So there's off. a motherboard in it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just pull it. Yeah. There, so. there we go. Now I broke it. Yeah. It won't come apart apparently, you got to cut them open. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't smell so good. And the light was on con permanently, you know, and it just went flat and went fat. <laughs> yeah, I think you should have rinsed it too. So. Yeah. But anyway, so this is just only a battery that can be replaced. So what we need to find out is about the contacts. That's right. That's right. Uh, the first thing is, I think we just uh, apply some power to yeah. it. Maybe we open it and we need to get some... Ah, it's easy. Nice so easy. we just yeah, yeah. have the, the power here. Yeah. Okay. Mm. 
So we just put the power here and the positive is on the top, okay. So I need some wires so that we built. But I think, did you open it? Yeah. 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 I think we should do the same again. Yeah. You just push the battery in. It would be, yeah, oh. just battery. Uh -huh. So. There's something. Oh yeah, it's the motor. Oh, so. Smelly. Yeah, it's something wrong. Hmm. Yeah. I think we yes. didn't stop it's it. It's the motor that it has a short cut, huh? Yeah, but yeah. what does it do when you... When Normally, you, if you power it up, yeah. it'll go... Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. The lights will flash and the props will go... Uh -huh. And then the props do what? Yeah, just a, just a they, slight movement. Ah, this is... So one so of these motors. Normally. So what we need to do, we need to open it and then disconnect the motors yeah. and then reconnect maybe the two that is good. Yeah. And then we will see if the flight controller still yeah. works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think because it's I think the flight controller is starting up, gives power to the Motor. motors mm. and two motors or at least the one with the black here yeah. that is completely we should disconnect this. Yeah. Do you have the screwdriver for this? I or? didn't bring, but yeah, I can okay. go. I can go get it. I will. I will check if I have. There's a few different funny shapes, you know. Do we need to take, take everything out? Yes, you got to take oh. the stabilizer off, yeah. the legs oh. off. Oh. Hey. It's so yeah, hard. it's maybe four. <laughs> no, it, right. it takes about twenty minutes. Okay. <laughs> no lights, huh? No. And the normal startup is a, a song first, you know? Yeah, but the sound is, is mostly made by the electronic speed controllers and the motors. They... No, no, it's a ba ba da ba Yeah, and it's made by the motors. <laughs> made by the motors? Yes. The motors <laughs> is <Sound> like... <laughs> there's a coil in it and uh, it starts to vibrate. That's a, Usually it's the motors doing these sounds. Um, doesn't look too good. Yeah, we got horizontal distance, we got vertical speed, we got horizontal speed. Look, and the LEDs are back on, that's visible. The cam goes back into the gimbal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Position. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Oh, but we cut something. all the wires to the motors because there was something. Yeah. Wrong, shorted. So now the next is we sorted the motors one by one back mm -hmm. to check which one is a bad one. Okay. And then we can try with, with the spare motors from my side here and check if, the, if it starts spinning. Yeah. So what? Yeah. If we just put the camera and those two antennas back and that's made the big the difference. Yeah. Yeah. So now we take the power off again. So at least we see now there is some. How about the GPS signal? It's it's yeah. right on the spot. Here. Eleven signals. Uh, sorry, eleven satellites. And, satellites. and we are on the right spot. Uh, it's saying turn on mobile. But yes, we are. Great. So that that is good. So that means uh, now I warm up the soldering iron. And have you got time for all this? Yeah, we're, I can. Right. I don't want to waste all your time. No. <laughs> I better go get some beers off the boat. <laughs> well, no, no, if so we drink, uh, don't give me any beer okay, at this okay, point. Okay. That's the wrong point. <laughs> Everything is up and all the screws are back. That's <laughs> broken more. <laughs> oh, I miss you, Raptor. Miss you, Raptor. <laughs> so that now that's why we put the, the healthy looking motor back, so oh, the gimbal yeah. is already adjusting. Yeah. Yeah. Also this sound is made by the motors yeah. of the cam. You know, these yeah. brushless motors, if you vibrate the, the coils in it, they make a sound. This one doesn't say anything. It's moving. So it was, what was it? Aha, this is yellow. Yep. And the last one was? It's written. Ah, there, it's written. Yeah. Ah, good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, nothing happens, only the motor spins the wrong direction. Yeah. Uh, and then it, you need to turn two wires. Okay, I get power on it. Okay. 
Yep. Well, a bit turning is okay, smoke is not okay. No, smoke. smoke. Oh, uh, both of them. Also the motor? No, this one. Uh, it's these. Speaking so there's something. Hmm. Uh, broken. So this is the power MOSFETs and if they start smoking, forget it. Yeah. Hmm. So it's all good except it can't turn propellers. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. While we waited for the weather to clear, there was still plenty of jobs to get done. So they're doing a little bit of maintenance today. Just spoke to um, the designer builder about these little piles of salt that building up in the hulls. And from time to time we get water in, you know, like whether it's a fresh water pump down that way, the fresh water pump uh, needs bleeding sometimes, so I get fresh water in there. And those uh, bilges are okay, but this one doesn't get so much fresh water. And just noticing a fair bit of salt buildup. But yeah, I just spoke with the uh, designer builder and he said, regularly flushing the bilge out with fresh water. So I guess regularly is probably once every six months. Give it a, uh, a hose out and then dry it out. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. There's not that many. I mean, I need to go up in the bowels. So double check that. Uh, there's this hull. This is all water tank under here. So that's already got fresh water. And yeah, then in the sterns. He said any places that you can't get to or the salt builds up uh, in, you know, in nooks and crannies, just throw in some epoxy paint and that will seal the aluminium. And then any salt that's sort of sitting on top of it is not going to affect that aluminium. I might actually brush off the uh, aluminium first and just vacuum up any of the, as much of the salt as I can and then we'll wash it and scrub it. another reason to have a water maker on board a boat so you can maintain your hull It had been a while since I'd done this, so I did a very thorough job. But normally, you would only need to do the very bottom of the bilge where any salt water may be laying. I know I should be the one in there, but he wants to check it, so. He wanted to advise himself. Plus, in this sweat box, 
Maybe I should lose a kilo. <laughs> like a sound. Yeah. Okay, let me out of here. Please let me out of here. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Don't you go. <close. laughs> So the builder painted under the engine, you can see the paint there, uh, which was a great idea because that's where salt water drips from the propeller shaft. But yeah, in hindsight, if I'd known better, I would have got him to paint the whole bilge. It's all right. Maybe we can do it. Not now, but later. So these are our stern lockers. And this is actually the waterproof, sorry, the um, buoyancy, stern buoyancy compartment. And in strictly should be closed completely. And But I decided to put these hatches in and they're mainly airtight. And, you know, a little bit of water still gets in just so we can use it for storage. And, and I stow all the empty containers. This side's water containers and that side's fuel containers. So containers are providing buoyancy if it was to flood. But ideally this should be empty and welded shut. But then you're always going to get condensation so you sort of want to get in there anyway. So now I can. This one's all good. No salt in here at all and there's always a little bit of rainwater leaks in so this one's a happy compartment work all this maths I decided it's finally time to get some sort of license for boats been sailing since I was 14 but I've never had any sort of license so uh, studying for the uh, offshore yacht masters through RYA which is the UK licensing and online theory and now a plan is to go to Antigua to do the practical, which is four or five days. Probably do it on Jupiter with an instructor for four or five days and then do the exam with a examiner. Fingers crossed it all goes well and I'll come out of it with a license to drive boats. <laughs> it's uh, interesting stuff, this... Um, all this navigation, but it's just not really relevant these days since chart plotters and GPS. Handy for coastal stuff, I guess, if the chart, if the GPS fails, um, but we've got like five GPSs on board, so, and I don't normally carry paper charts. Um, so if the chart plotter breaks, we've got the laptop. I've also got another chart plotter, but then the laptops have charts as well so yeah it's not really relevant and it's just one of those exercises that to pass the test this is what you got to learn anyway keeping me busy all right next week on life on jupiter we reinstall the mainsail we get our water maker operational and receive quite a surprise at the fuel dock. <laughs>